Hello, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff ePro 19 FD travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, I should leave plenty of room for this awning. On your off campsite, I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Power is going to be right behind your tire. And then your water connection is actually going to be all the way on the rear. Or toward the campsite. So there's your docking station over there. So park accordingly. So you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook our hitch. First thing you want to do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Get a night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply extend the raise. Retract to lower. Now your unit with the door being right toward the middle of the unit, open up the door, set a level inside there and watch this unit until it's level. Once it is level, we'll go ahead and stabilize it. Before stabilizing it, I want to mention, should you lose power and you can't get this power tongue jack up and down, underneath this rubber stopper, this hand crank that we're going to use on our stabilizing jacks will also fit on here and get this up and down without power. Speed of power, check your battery post every now and then, make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. Once our unit's level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Now you can use an impact driver or drill gun down here on this. Um, yours aren't too high from the ground, so I wouldn't recommend it. They just come down pretty quick. As they come down, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Use your 10% off coupon. We have a four pack of them throw one down underneath each one of these run these down just until they're taut so let me get that down there as you can see you're just going to run this down until you have resistance on your hand crank remember we don't want to lift this anymore we've already got it level run all four of them down once we got it level and stable we can hook up our power and water the power cord it's like a pistol grip. If you plug them in, this will light up showing you got power. Put that in, see I'm pointing at about 11 o'clock, and then turn it to noon, and then lock your little washer on there. Now, should you need to plug into a 110, and your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp producer. Get your power hooked up, and let's hook up our water. Your docking station is back around in this corner here. At campsites, we're going to hook up to city water connection. Talk about your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when hooking up because you don't know what the water pressure is in different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Your hot water heater is going to be right around the corner here. And now we're doing at this point, folks, to make sure our drain plugs back in. Line that up right. Pull it down. Take your rod, throw some plumber's tape around there. Tape works best, not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Get that in there nice and snug. Inch and eighth socket. Once that in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose has been on for a couple of minutes, once you go inside and open up all of your water lines. Get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Shut them off. Come back out here. Lift up on your pressure release valve. If you get some water out of there, then you'll know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn that on from indoors. Now, if for some chance your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, these Suburbans got a reset. These will bubble up. If they're bubbled up, simply press them back in. Now, let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to be hooked up at a city camp. We're going to go dry camping. In that case, we're going to fill up our freshwater tank. Going all the way over to our campsite. Above our tires is our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply use a hose to gravity fill it. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve. Or two, on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Once that's full, remove that hose. Put your cap back on there, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked to city water, that's already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set up with power and water. I'm gonna continue walking around the unit, showing you your off camp side. Off camp, we got docking lights here, some storage, more storage here. Inside there will be a griddle, a stand, a table. Uh, we got a Forest River spatula to go right along with that grill. I'll show you that hooks all up on the other side. You got a vent for your microwave. Hot and cold outdoor shower. Flue for your furnace, couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear that. It does get hot. You got your fresh water tank. Fresh water drain. Get up underneath there and pull that handle right there. That'll dump that when you're leaving the campsites. Our power, our dumps, low point drains. In the back you got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. We also prep for a backup camera here. Furion sells one device sits on the dash you tow vehicle, another device attaches to this, giving you a backup camera for the unit. More in our docking station here. Here's where our city water went in. Here's where your antifreeze will go in. This is your tank flush. We'll talk about that when dumping our black and gray tanks. And this is cable and satellite connections. Over on your campsite, on your awning, you've got pitch control. It's raining, you want to run all the rainwater this way. Pull down on that pitch control that will tilt your awning. Storage. Again, your hot water heater. This is the lip that your griddle, the griddle stand, and a table will go on. Down here's your quick connect for that. A couple of 110s here. Porch light, outdoor speaker. The other side of your pass-through storage with that table and griddle. Some more storage here with a tire that you can put on instead of your flat foot. Check your batteries post every now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. And all these flag shafts. Now your battery disconnect is going to be right up underneath your propane over here. That would disconnect all your battery power to the unit by turning that. That will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector. I'll cover something out here. We'll take a look at the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry door in case of an emergency. Before we go any further, I'm going to talk about a couple of apps. Here, control the lipper app, control your RV app, one control. You can open your awnings, your slide outs, and control all your lights from your phone. So download that app on your app store. Up here, you can scan for just uh, instructions on your tire pressure monitoring system. It comes with this unit. I will go ahead and I'm looking for that system. I will send a separate video on that as well as on your Go Power controller. I will talk about that in a moment, but I'll send a separate video on that or you can get one from here on how to hook that up. Over to my right here is going to be my control panel. Here's your brand new battery, fresh black and gray tank checks. Here's where you turn on your water pump, infusing that fresh water. Here's where you turn on your hot water heater hooked to gas, your hot water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Choose correctly. Here's where you turn on tank heaters. That's going to turn on a little 12-volt pad that's on your tanks to keep them from freezing in inclement weather. All of these are lights. And then your awning control. On your awning, you only want to extend that out until you can see that flat fall down to 90 degrees and you can see your bar. If you hold that button down on extend, that will continue to run itself out and start to run itself out backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Only run it out as far as you need to. We'll finish running that back in. Coming into our living room. Of course, this tabletop will lift up. Remove these legs. Set your tabletop on these four pieces here. Put your back cushions on top. That will give you another sleeping quarters. One touch light in here. Up here on your TV. Over here's your cable hookup. 110. Start that up for you.
when you get to uh, your local campsite go into your menu run a digital channel scan so that you can pick up all the local channels up here's your Wi-Fi Ranger I can actually send a separate video on that as well and I'll tell you how to use that uh, down here's our sound system turn that on AM FM you get a channel in here and, and that's there we go that's so indoors or outdoor speakers or neither AM FM Bluetooth auxiliary nice sound system down here's your go power controller um, the only concern with this is to make sure it sounds like I can show you how to do it you hold an A here there's a B and that will move you want to make sure you're on on your flooded go all the way back around on this one thing you need to be concerned with is make sure you're on flooded battery and you're on flooded which is kind of battery that you have on these the main purpose of this is to keep your solar panel from overcharging your batteries you're at 100 percent that's the sole purpose in that video will explain more continuing here in the living room we've got a self-explanatory microwave magic chef electric fridge coming into the kitchen we've got a light and a fan above our cooktop turn on our panel light here these glass tops make an excellent backsplash just fold that back turn this to light hit your spark and you want you to get some gas into the lines turn these to light and there's a light right up same thing on your oven, you'll turn that to light, hit the spark, that will light your pilot light, and then just take and turn those, turn this to the desired temperature. Drop your panel light down for an oven light. Got a sink here with drying rack. Extended table here, 110 with GFCI reset. Crank your air up here, show you that front individually up here controls are here where's your heat oh, turn out from this suburban thermostat over here you'll notice that the um, thermos furnace tends to take a couple minutes to cycle through doesn't shut off as quickly as your AC does show you how to turn your bed into a yourself into a bed everything is a murky bed you want to grab this at the bottom and lift it up. That's going to lay my bed down flat. You see your storage underneath there with your griddle, etc. We're going to come up here, unlock, unlock here. And as you bring this down, you want to lift up on your feet. Keep your feet from coming down onto your sofa there. And just say quickly, you've got a bed. Now putting it back, you're going to want to pull back on this while you lift. That's going to release it. You do this with two hands and just have you watch me here. Back on that. Lift this up. Throw our locks back in. Jack that for a sofa back up. And just that quickly move back to a sofa that has cup holders and recliners the 110's here here's where you turn on your inverter that would take your battery turn into 110 power very shortly brief periods Going back into our bathroom I make sure you've got the hand crank open, power exhaust vent here, your lighting, more plumbing to keep an eye on, the access panel to that, access panel to the bottom of your tub. That about covers everything in here. So I like you're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. 
I would start back here by making sure I've, my vent is closed, my doors are closed, everything's secure. Go through your unit, make sure everything's been put away. TV's back in its secure position. Oh, I did want to mention the smoke alarm above that. Sorry about that. Come to my control panel. Shut off all of my lights, and then I can see any accident lights that I need to walk through the unit and shut off. Turn it all off. We'll exit the unit. Again, on these steps, I'm going to make sure this door is all the way open. Otherwise, that can catch on it. Set this up. Lock the steps in place. Before you leave the campsite, lock and deadbolt this or before you leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt this door. Lift and turn that handle. That's how you want that for travel. All right, if we are out dry camping, we're gonna come around, get up underneath there, dump our fresh water tank, bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home or to the nearest dump station, whatever is needed. If we're at a campsite, we're gonna hook our power, our water, our cable, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Dump station parked accordingly. Your dump's going to be way at the rear of your off campsite or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Arrive, hook up, hook up your hose, and pull that black handle. That's going to be your sewage. It sounds like that's no longer draining. Come over here, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook up here to this tank flush. Turn that on, let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Come back over, make sure all that drain that you just put in there has drained. You gotta check your level of your tanks on the inside, you can. But make sure all that washout you put in there is gone. Close that black handle, pull your gray handle. Now normally while my gray handles are dumping, I'll go ahead and dump my low point drains. Come around to my hot water heater. We're done camping for the season. Get in here and lift up in this pressure release valve. Now that's going to dump a bunch of hot water out of there, so be careful. When that's done, push that back down, and then you can pull your drain plug. If you have residual hot water down there, be careful as well. When that gray tank is done, close that gray handle, take your sewage hose, and store it in a convenient sanitary place, and head on home. Actually, I just noticed that your unit actually does have a stinky, slinky holder. Right up underneath here. Nice sanitary place for your sewage hose. Yeah, we thank you so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this e-pro for many years to come. Happy camping.